in our service change. Uh, we want to check audio and make sure my microphone is working correctly. Am I being heard? Okay. Uh, hopefully, if, if there are any audio concerns, folks can use the, the chat box and let us know if I'm not being heard. Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rob LaFontaine. I'm the planning manager here at Intercity Transit, and it's my pleasure this afternoon to um, to share with you a, a uh, the service change proposal that we are currently accepting public comment on. So we hope you uh, find value in this webinar. This is a new format for us, and uh, this webinar, while being broadcast live, is also going to be recorded and placed on our website so it can be viewed later. So Intercity Transit right now has a rather significant uh, service change that's being proposed. Uh, for those who may have participated in Intercity Transit's uh, road trip survey last summer, uh, you'll be pleased to know that some of the results from that road trip survey have been incorporated into the work that we're doing here uh, with this particular service change. I would like to point out that the service change that we are discussing this afternoon is a revenue neutral service change, meaning that the changes we have proposed are not intended to require any additional financial or uh, labor resources of inner city transit. Uh, if you have interest in additional increases in service, perhaps um, service into new areas or evening service, um, we would continue or love to have your continued participation as Intercity Transit discusses our long range uh, planning work, uh, hopefully here in the coming weeks. So for now, what I would like to do is walk us through our presentation. Um, the information we're going to be presenting this afternoon is consistent with what you can find on intercitytransit.com slash service changes, as well as our special edition of our rider news, which we hope you've seen um, out on our buses in, in our customer service location at the Olympia Transit Center. During the presentation, if you have questions, we would invite you to uh, write your questions down using the chat box that's located on the right side of your screen. Uh, following going through all of the slides, I'll be responding to questions that might come in. So we'll go ahead and get started. We have significant changes uh, that have been prepared for routes 12, 42, and 68. And we're going to go through those one by one. And so what I'm going to do is uh, narrate some of the, the information that you're seeing on the screen. And then we have maps that we'll, we'll show, and I'll be able to uh, walk through each of the changes on a visual map. So with Route 12, our summary says, the changes to Route 12 would introduce new trip options by providing direct service between Tumwater South Puget Sound Community College in West Olympia, an increased frequency to 30 minutes on weekdays. The proposed Route 12 would complement the revised Route 42 and maintain 15 minute service between the Olympia Transit Center and SPSCC. So if you're familiar with our current service, you might know that routes 43 and 44 complement one another and provide 15 minute frequency between the Olympia Transit Center and South Puget Sound Community College. Under the proposal, that level of service would be maintained. However, it would change to routes 12 and 42, providing that service. So specifically with Route 12, how it differs from how we know it today is the bus, the, the route would provide service on Barnes Boulevard between Linwood Avenue and South Puget Sound Community College, as well as in the Olympia Transit Center the change replaces portions of the discontinued Route 43 and the discontinued Route 44, as I just mentioned. The service uh, would also change in Tumwater on 2nd Avenue between Linwood and Tumwater Square. We have heard some, some comments about this particular change, and I'll, I'll speak to those in just a moment as we get to the map. Another change for Route 12 is with regard to uh, the, the segment between Tumwater Square and the Olympia Transit Center. <clears throat> Currently, uh, uh, that particular segment is serviced by routes 12, 13, and 68, which provides more than enough service for that particular segment, which gives us the opportunity to reallocate uh, Route 12 and 68. Additionally, as, as a result of this particular change to Route 12, uh, late night service, um, the, 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 the time between 
9 p.m. and later, we would be introducing three new trips that would be traveling from the Olympia Transit Center to Labor and Industries. Lastly, it's important to note that the frequency of Route 12 would increase to 30 minutes all day long. If you're familiar with Route 12 right now, it provides 30 minute frequency during the AM and PM peak period, but then reduces to 60 minute frequency during the off peak. So uh, pleased to present that Route 12 would increase to a, a 30 minute frequency all day long. Okay, next let's talk about Route 42 and then we'll jump to our map. So Route 42 under the summary says, changes to Route 42 would provide direct service between Thurston County Family and Juvenile Court and the Olympia Transit Center. This bus route would complement the revised Route 12 to maintain 15 minute service between the Olympia Transit Center and SPSCC. So I just mentioned a moment ago about routes 43 and 44 would be discontinued under the proposal and replaced by routes 12, 42, and also Route 68. Specifically with, the, with Route 42, if, if, uh, if you're familiar with Route 42, you know that it's a, a loop right now that provides service between South Puget Sound Community College out to Thurston County Family and Juvenile Court and then returns back to South Puget Sound Community College via Cooper Point Road. So we're proposing to realign Route 42 to be an out and back or, or provide bi-directional service that would travel all the way down to the, the Olympia Transit Center. Also, we'd like to point out that under the proposal, there would be continuous service earlier and later in the day and removes gaps in the schedule during the mid-morning and mid-afternoons. So Route 42 right now has a, a gap in service between 9 a.m. and noon, as well as a gap in service between uh, 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So under the proposal, Route 42 would operate continuously without gaps. The change would also provide two-way service on Dr. Nels Hansen Way, which travels through the campus of South Puget Sound Community College. Uh, there is currently one-way service on that road, and so under the proposal, that would become two-way service. There would be a, a discontinuing of service on R.W. Johnson Boulevard and Black Lake Boulevard between 29th Avenue and Cooper Point Road. There are five bus stops located in this particular segment. And under the proposal, those would be discontinued. We would also discontinue service of Route 42 on Cooper Point Road between Black Lake Boulevard and SPSCC, as that would be provided by the revised Route 68. Okay, so if we go to the map, we can get a visual of our routes 12 and 42 under the proposal. So let's begin with Route 12, which is identified here in the red. So Route 12 operates primarily on the west side of, of Interstate 5. And let's begin in, in Tumwater at the Labor and Industries Building, which is the southern terminus for Route 12. So heading inbound to the Olympia Transit Center, Route 12 is going to make its loop, as it does currently, on Tumwater Boulevard and Israel Road, make its turn onto Little Rock Road, and continue to provide service past Tumwater Middle School, Walmart, Costco, and Fred Meyer would make its left-hand turn on Trosper, followed by a right-hand turn on Rural, as it currently does, and then a right-hand turn on Linwood Avenue. And this is where the change would, would happen with Route uh, number 12. Rather than continuing service to Second Avenue, the route would make a left-hand turn, would make a left-hand turn from Linwood Avenue onto Seventh Avenue, which becomes Barnes Boulevard, and then it would travel up and over Tumwater Hill uh, to Crosby Boulevard, and then access South Puget Sound Community College. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a, a small red line, but uh, it trust us that, that it's our intention that Route 12 would provide service to South Puget Sound Community College, both outbound and inbound. So from the community college, the bus would continue inbound on Crosby Boulevard uh, over Highway 101 right hand turn on Evergreen Park Drive, would go past the courthouse, the county courthouse, uh, make a left hand turn on the, the Chutes Parkway, and eventually work its way on Fifth Avenue into the Olympia Transit Center. So the Olympia Transit Center would continue to be the, the other terminal point uh, for Route 12. So the, the Olympia Transit Center and labor and industries continuing to be the terminal point. However, the significant uh, change being the, the revised route along the uh, the west side of the community 
rather than service along Capitol Way between Tumwater Square and the Olympia Transit Center. Okay. I mentioned earlier that we've received some concern about uh, the, the removal of Route 12 service on 2nd Avenue. And, and we do recognize that this would be a change for those impacted by the service. And, and in particular, trips that are intended to travel to uh, Capitol Campus would require uh, a transfer at Tumwater Square, Tumwater Square to Route 13, uh, as well as the use of Route 68. For those who might be accessing Route 12 uh, on the southern portion of the route, they could consider uh, accessing Route 12, transferring to Route 13 at Labor and Industries, and then using Route 13 to access Capitol Campus. Route 42 is also illustrated on our map. Route 42 is identified with the green line. And as we talked earlier, fairly significant changes for Route 42. And let's begin with the Olympia Transit Center, which would become a new terminal point for Route 42. So as the bus leaves the Olympia Transit Center, it would do so using uh, Fifth Avenue onto Deschutes Parkway, up Courthouse Hill to the Thurston County Courthouse, out Evergreen Park Drive, along uh, Crosby Boulevard, and then access South Puget Sound Community College. Once at the college, the bus would continue on 29th Avenue or Dr. Nels Hansen Way toward the Thurston County Family and Juvenile Court, as it does uh, currently. But rather than, rather than Route 42 continuing service along R.W. Johnson, instead, it would provide new service directly back to SPSCC and then directly back to the Olympia Transit Center. So we see our red and our green lines running parallel between the Olympia Transit Center and South Puget Sound Community College, indicating where those two routes are, are complementing one another, providing, or I should say maintaining, 15 minute frequency between the Transit Center and the Community College. Also represented on our map are the, these diamond uh, icons. The diamonds represent bus stops that are currently in service, but under the proposed change would no longer provide service or be provided service by uh, the affected routes. So in this case, the, the segment between the uh, between Tumwater Square and the Olympia Transit Center they would continue to be provided service by our Route 13, as well as our DASH service. All right, so the, that summarizes our Routes 12 and 42. We'll go now to Route 68, which is the third piece of this particular change in Tumwater and West Olympia. So under the proposal, Route 68 would provide direct service between Lacey and then South Puget Sound Community College and West Olympia, and like Route 12 would also increase frequency to 30 minutes on weekdays. So more specifically, we would discontinue service on Capitol Way between Tumwater Square and the Olympia Transit Center, as we've discussed, as that's currently provided by Route 13, which operates every 15 minutes and would continue to operate every 15 minutes under the proposal, and as, as well as DASH service, which is also available on that segment. Under the proposal, the change to Route 68 would provide service in Tumwater on 2nd Avenue and Barnes Boulevard between Tumwater Square and SBSCC, which would replace portions of our current Route 12, as well as the discontinued Route 43 under the proposal. The change to Route 68 would provide service in Olympia on Cooper Point Road between the Community College uh, in Capitol Mall, this change replaces portions of the proposed discontinued Route 44. And then again, would replace, or excuse me, would increase frequency to 30 minute all day uh, on weekdays. So again, like Route 12, our Route 68 uh, has 30 minute frequency during the AM and PM peak periods, but then reduces to 60 minute frequency during the midday. So under the proposal, uh, the Route 68 would increase to 30 minutes all day long. So we look on the map, uh, Route 68 is identified in red, and it's a, it's a lengthy route which would travel, uh, if we begin on the east side, the Lacey Transit Center. It's going to continue to follow its, its route as we know it today. 
uh, as it leaves uh, Lacey and travels down Carpenter Road and uh, in Mullen Road. That's all uh, proposed to have no changes. It would be the Route 68 as we know it today with existing service to the Lacey Corporate Center where uh, there would be transfers available to Route 64, 66, and 94. The route would continue on the Elm Highway as well as Henderson Boulevard and North Street to service the neighborhoods adjacent to Olympia High School. When the bus reaches Tumwater Square is where the change is introduced. Currently, our Route 68, upon arriving at Tumwater Square, travels north on Capitol Way to the, to the Olympia Transit Center. Under the proposal, Route 68 would, once departing Tumwater Square, travel west, come on now, there we go, travel west on 2nd Avenue in Tumwater to 7th Avenue, Barnes Boulevard up and over Tumwater Hill and arrive at South Puget Sound Community College. So this is where we see our Route 68 under the proposal, assuming the service that is currently provided by our Route 43 and a portion of our existing Route 12. The Route 68, upon leaving South Puget Sound Community College, would continue on Cooper Point Road to its other terminal point in West Olympia, which is Capitol Mall. And here's where we see our, our Route 68, our proposed Route 68, assuming service that's currently provided by our Route 44. The return trip for the proposed Route 68 would, would mirror its outbound trip and would follow service back through Tumwater, uh, back to SBSCC, back to Tumwater Square, and eventually back to the Lacey Transit Center. So interesting to note, that under the proposed change, Route 68 would not travel to the Olympia Transit Center and instead would provide direct access between the neighborhoods in Lacey and South Olympia to, to South Puget Sound Community College and West Olympia, including Capitol Mall. One of the concerns that we've heard about this particular proposal involves the transfer at Tumwater Square. Uh, it's important to note that while we're still developing our schedules, we have absolute intentions of uh, preserving a, a timed transfer between the proposed Route 68 and the existing Route 13. We also recognize that we need to make some uh, minor adjustments to our Route 13 in order to accommodate uh, arrivals at the Capitol campus before the 7 o'clock hour for those who are trying to reach Capitol Campus uh, prior to 7 a.m. Okay, so as we can see, routes 12, 42, and 68 are other significant changes that affect the uh, Tumwater, uh, South Olympia, and West Olympia uh, neighborhoods. We'll talk now about Route 47, which operates in, in West Olympia. Under the proposal, Route 47 would simplify service to and from Capitol Mall and introduce new service in West Olympia on Kaiser Road and Harrison Avenue. So our Route 47, as we know it today, it's a busy route and it's trying to do a lot of different things and, and serve as many as we can, uh, which means the route is, is operating on, on a variety of different roads and making a variety of movements. So under the proposal, we would attempt to simplify the route and provide more direct access to and from Capitol Mall, which means Route 47 would discontinue service on Black Lake Boulevard between Capitol Mall and Harrison Avenue. We would also discontinue service between Division Street and Cooper Point Road, as well as Kenyon, as those would be provided by our existing Route 48 or 49 on Sunday, as well as the revised Route 68 would provide service on Harrison and Kenyon. Lastly, we'd like to point out that under the proposal to Route 47, service would be discontinued on both McPhee Road and Yager Way, um, as well as the eastbound service on Capitol Mall Drive. We would be introducing a loop on Route 47, which results in one-way service on Capitol Mall Drive. A little bit easier to see when we go to the map. So let's walk through Route 47, which begins at the Olympia Transit Center travels uh, via 4th Avenue to Sherman Road, 
uh, makes a right hand turn onto Fifth Avenue, a left on Decatur, a right on Ninth, and a right on Black Lake Boulevard. None of that would be proposed to change. However, once on Black Lake Boulevard is where the change would be introduced for Route 47. Capitol Mall has an access point located at the uh, Capitol Place Apartments or the 24 hour fitness. So we would propose to uh, discontinue bus service uh, on Black Lake Boulevard between that particular mall access point and uh, Harrison Avenue, which means there actually would be three bus stops. We, we have indicated two, but uh, we've come to realize that the Capitol Place Apartments uh, would not be serviceable under this proposal. Uh, the bus would enter the Capitol Mall property, uh, would, would uh, stop at the Capitol Mall transfer station to allow transfers to the other routes serving Capitol Mall, and then would exit the Capitol Mall at the, uh, the Red Robin exit, uh, as we refer to it. Uh, make a, a left-hand turn onto Cooper Point Road, followed by a right-hand turn on Capitol Mall Drive. Here's where we would provide existing service on Capitol Mall Drive. However, once the bus reaches the Capitol Medical Center under the proposal, it would continue straight on Cap uh, Capitol Mall Drive or 7th Avenue rather than making a right-hand turn on McPhee Road. So which means service on McPhee Road and Yager Way, which includes four bus stops, would be discontinued under the proposal. The what would replace McPhee and Yager Way would be new service on 7th Avenue as well as Kaiser Road. The bus upon serving Kaiser Road would make a right-hand turn on Harrison Avenue and then travel back to Cooper Point Road uh, where it would service uh, the stops located near the Safeway store at the intersection of Cooper Point Road and Harrison Avenue. So what's being proposed, as we can see, is, is a loop where we're trying to add new service to new areas and which would operate in a clockwise fashion. Once the bus leaves the, the Safeway stop on Cooper Point Road, it would travel back to Capitol Mall, uh, accessing the way it left at the Red Robin access point, back to the Capitol Mall transfer station, and then follow its existing route back to the Olympia Transit Center as it operates today. So the changes in particular, again, would include discontinuing service on Black Lake Boulevard, uh, on Harrison Avenue, on Kenyon, as well as uh, McPhee Road and Yager Way. So fairly significant changes proposed for Route 47, again, intended to simplify the route, as well as introduce new service on Kaiser Road. We'll move on to route number 60. Compared to the other routes we've discussed so far, Route 60 has uh, only, only one change, which is, which is not nearly as many as the other routes have had. The proposal says to change Route 60 would provide, uh, excuse me, proposed changes to Route 60 would improve consistency as well as address challenges with on-time performance. So it's important to, to pause and note that several of the changes that we are discussing with this proposal are specifically designed to improve on-time performance with our existing bus routes. And it's important that, that the schedule that we prepare and that we distribute to the public has integrity as folks use that schedule to make very important trips, often to work or school or other uh, time-sensitive appointments. And so we wanna ensure that we're doing our part to make sure that uh, the, the schedule has integrity. And when buses are, are scheduled to arrive, we're doing everything that we can to ensure that they are arriving on time. And Route 60 is one of our routes that does struggle at times with its on-time performance. So what's being proposed is a relatively minor change which would discontinue service on 12th Avenue uh, to the stop located at St. Francis House. So if we look at our map, this is the, the area that we're talking about, which is up by St. Peter Hospital. The Route 60, both outbound and inbound, services St. Francis House, but only does so between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. So under the proposal, the route would discontinue service on 12th Avenue and rather would provide consistent service all day long on Lily Road. And we recognize that this is a bit of an inconvenience 
for folks who uh, reside or travel to uh, St. Francis House, but we would invite you to, uh, to consider using the bus stop that's located at the corner of Lily Road and 12th Avenue. Okay, Route 62A. So our Route 62A and B are Intercity Transit's busiest routes. By volume, they carry the most passengers within our system. Uh, and as with Route 60, our Route 62, they struggle with on-time performance, operating up and down Martin Way as a very busy corridor and uh, heavy traffic. And unfortunately, the buses are, uh, they, they struggle at times to stay on schedule. So under the proposal, uh, Route 62A uh, would adjust the schedule to improve on-time performance, as well as introduce service to Northeast Lacey. So we'll start with the schedule adjustment. We're proposing to add an additional 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on, on the time of day, to both Route 62A and 62B. This lengthened schedule is really the, the, the catalyst for a lot of the changes we've discussed so far. By lengthening the schedule to Route 62A and B affects the discontinuing of Routes 43 and 44, which brings us back to our Routes 12 and 42. So a lot of this is, is interconnected, but it's important to know that by lengthening the schedule with Route 62A, it's our objective to keep the bus uh, on time with more reliability, but that enhanced amount of time does allow us the opportunity to introduce service into Northeast Lacey. So what's different about Route 62A under the proposal is new service on Orion Drive, Lamet Drive, and Marvin Road in Northeast Lacey. So we're excited to be able to consider a new service in, into this area. It's been uh, an important area that's been uh, desired service for, for quite some time. And so we're excited about the, the possibility of introducing service to Northeast Lacey. Uh, we need to recognize that with that particular change, as we would be constructing a loop, as a result, we would be discontinuing westbound service on Martin Way between Meridian Road and Marvin Road. Looking at our map helps illustrate that. Again, Route 62A being identified by the red line. And we are in, in East Lacey to, to give us a sense of where we're at. Traveling down Martin Way the bus would not, under the proposal, make a left-hand turn on Galaxy Drive and serve to service Walmart, but instead would continue straight heading uh, eastbound on Martin Way, make a left-hand turn on Meridian, and upon arriving at the roundabout at Meridian and Orion, would not make its turn as it does today, but instead would go straight through the roundabout and, in, and provide a new service along Orion Drive through some of the employment uh, centers located along Mori Orion and uh, Willamette Drive. The stars that we have indicated on the map suggest uh, new proposed bus stops. We do have 10 shown. Uh, it would be our hope to introduce 10 new bus stops. However, uh, it's important to recognize that we, we may not be successful in, in implementing all 10 of the bus stops uh, in preparation for the potential September 23rd effective date. As the bus would continue to provide new service along Willamette Drive, we would make uh, some maneuvers uh, near the, the intersection of uh, Britton Parkway and um, in Marvin Road to provide a bus stop at the Providence Healthcare Clinic located on Marvin Road. And we would continue to provide bus service on, or we, we would provide a new bus service on Marvin Road South uh, over Interstate uh, 5 and then back on, on Quinault Drive and Galaxy to the Walmart stop. So uh, for those who are, are seeking access to Walmart, uh, important to recognize that the Route 62A would be providing service to the Walmart stop only once during its outbound trip uh, rather than twice as it currently does. And we can see here also by our black dots, the uh, proposed bus stops that would be discontinued under the proposal as there would be, um, there, there would be no uh, westbound service on, on Martin Way. 
Okay. We'll jump now to our express service uh, route uh, 612. Our proposal says that the proposed changes to express service would consolidate routes 603, 605, and the 612. Adjustments to the schedule would improve on-time performance and provide 15 minute departures during peak hour trips. So Intercity Transit currently operates Monday through Friday, uh, quite a bit of, of service between Thurston County and Pierce County. And we do so using routes 603, 605, and 612, all of which combine to provide a, a variety of trip options. However, we're concerned that that many options has left folks concerned about which bus might be the, the appropriate bus for their particular trip. So under the proposal, what we are intending to do would be to collapse all of the express, the weekday express level service into a single route, which we would label our route 612. And that would provide a, a more simplified streamlined service between downtown Olympia and downtown Tacoma, which means express service to the Lac Lacey Transit Center, Hawkesbury Park and Ride, and the Tacoma Dome station would be discontinued. Our goal here is to offer uh, quick, reliable service that makes as few stops as as we can to help uh, provide a to help incentivize uh, riding the bus between the two counties as opposed to driving a car and certainly we know by um, by the by the traffic volumes on interstate 5 that's a very busy corridor between Thurston County and Pierce County if we go to our map We'll walk through uh, the, the route. And again, it's important to recognize that the fundamental goal behind our Olympia uh, Express service is to serve those traveling northbound, those who are those whose whose trips are are originating in Thurston County and are traveling north to Pierce or perhaps King County and re then returning to Thurston County in the afternoon. And that is an important distinction as we're getting uh, several comments from folks who are indicating uh, some frustration about uh, making trips southbound. So the, the route would begin at the Olympia Transit Center, would continue to provide service in downtown Olympia as it does today, and then would access, access Interstate 5, would travel north on Interstate 5, and would make its only stop at the Martin Way Park and Ride. Again, important to recognize that the service is being designed in particular with the motorist who might be trying to travel to Pierce County and, and other places northward. So we would stop at the Martin Way Park and Ride. Upon leaving the Park and Ride, State 5 into Pierce County, we would make stops at Lakewood Station, the 512 Park and Ride, which provides between the two uh, wonderful access to other commuter options provided by Sound Transit. We would continue northward on Interstate 5 using um, the I-705 to access 10th and Commerce in downtown Tacoma. Uh, 10th and Commerce has been selected as the uh, favorable downtown location or favorable terminate, terminus location for the Route 612 because of the uh, employment center that is downtown Tacoma, as well as the connections available to Pierce Transit Service. Um, and at 10th and Commerce in downtown Tacoma. We have received quite a few comments suggesting that the Tacoma Dome station would be a uh, preferred alternative than 10th and Commerce. Um, I would like folks to know that uh, we are reviewing that and uh, might very well be issuing an addendum to this particular proposal um, with regards to the, the Tacoma Dome station. So uh, we we ask for your your continued involvement if, if an addendum is issued. We'd love to hear your comments. For those who would be making the reverse commute, traveling uh, south in the in the morning into Thurston County, uh, we understand that that the design of the service uh, would create some potential uh, challenges. Uh, but we do want to point out that uh, it's the service has been specifically designed with the northbound commuter in mind. We do intend to offer 15 minute frequency during the AM and PM peak periods, 
meaning buses would leave in the mornings, they would leave the Olympia Transit Center uh, every 15 minutes uh, with service northbound to 10th and Commerce in Tacoma. And then conversely in the afternoon would leave downtown Tacoma every 15 minutes returning back to the, the Olympia Transit Center. So we would hope that with that level of frequency, uh, those who would be making uh, reverse commutes would still find the service useful and valuable. We have a few other changes that are worth mentioning. Our route 62B, while we are not proposing the changes to its route, we'd like to advise folks that under the proposal, we would be providing additional time into the schedule to help improve on-time performance. Like 62A, both the A and the B uh, struggle with traffic congestion and um, adhering to the, the existing schedule. So we hope to resolve that through making adjustments to its weekday and weekend schedule. Route 94, which provides service between downtown Olympia and Yelm, we have proposed to increase the amount of time on Saturday and Sunday for the bus to travel between those two points, which results in one fewer trip on Saturday and one fewer trip on Sunday that we would be able to perform under that, that span of service. And to recap a bit, when we were speaking earlier of, of routes 12, 42, and 68, important to recognize that uh, the revised routes 12, 42, and 68 would replace routes 43 and 44 as we know them today, and they would be discontinued. And as we just spoke a moment ago with regard to our express service, routes 603 and 605 would be, uh, would be discontinued and replaced by a consolidated route 612. And finally, it's important to recognize that we do have a number of routes that do not have any proposed changes under the current proposal. Okay, that's a lot of information. We hope that's valuable. And we have been uh, very active uh, collecting uh, public comment on this particular proposal. Uh, we, can, we want to continue to collect public comment through June 20th. We have a variety of ways by which folks can, can send their comments. Uh, we have received, by my count, over 100 comments already, and so we certainly appreciate the comments. Uh, we have been responding to as many as we can, um, and, and they do help uh, influence the decisions that are made. So, so please know that the comments are, are received, uh, they are reviewed, and, and they are valued. So a variety of methods there by which you can comment, and we would like now to go into the, the interactive portion where we're going to um, see what questions have come in. So this is where it's a little bit exciting. Okay, question says, if, this, if the service would be earlier or later, uh, would have no ridership, is there a plan to advertise a bit more or move those resources elsewhere? Well, certainly we want our service to be valuable and in, in, uh, providing bus service um, is, does, does require a lot of resources and we wanna make sure that we're using those resources uh, as wisely as possible. Uh, so where we do find that we have areas of low ridership, it does make sense to review um, discontinuing ridership or discontinuing service in those areas. Um, but also it depends on, on, on what type of service it is. Perhaps uh, to the question, it could be resolved with a bit more advertising on that particular segment. Um, if we think that uh, perhaps the service is useful and, and folks are just unaware of it, that could be the case with perhaps our commuter service. Another question is, um, actually before I, I read that question, I, I should remind folks that we do have up on our, our website, intercitytransit.com slash service changes, a list of frequently asked questions, uh, which might be very valuable if, if your particular question um, has not come up so far or I've been unable to, to answer it uh, in the presentation. So uh, please feel, feel welcome to 
uh, check out our website and the frequently asked questions you might find what it is you, that you're looking for. Second question is, has intercity transit had a route change this big before? That's a good question and, and one that I'm not sure that I'm qualified to answer. Um, while I've, I've only been in my position a few months, um, but I've been told by by a, a few of my coworkers that it's been, a, been quite a long time since intercity transit has made a change of this magnitude. Um, again, important to recognize that this is a growing community and with that growing community comes increased traffic congestion uh, that the buses must mitigate. And so a lot of the changes that are being proposed are intended to resolve uh, difficulties with on-time performance. We hope that through the, the long range planning work that we're doing uh, to be able to have additional resources to provide service to new areas uh, or perhaps enhanced uh, weekend service and other enhancements which have have come up through the road trip process. All right, bear with me as I'm reading through the chat line to see what other questions have come up. Here's a good question that's come up a few times. When will you submit changes to one bus away? Uh, are they notified in advance? Right now, my understanding is uh, one bus away receives its, its feed from our existing service. I don't believe that we have the ability to, uh, at this point, and, and I'm, we're happy to look into this further because I, I think it'd be wonderful if we could do it but right now, I, I don't think we have the ability yet to place the changes into uh, th that would be proposed for September 23rd into the One Bus Away app and allow trip planning to happen prior to uh, the effective date. So, um, but we will continue to work on that, and and perhaps uh, there there will be a chance for us to 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 get the changes um, into the One Bus Away app. Uh, before the actual effective date. Um, I understand that that would be valuable with trip planning prior to the change. Okay, another question is, have you consulted with developmental disability, uh, with the developmental disability community to ensure those who need uh, to get downtown are minimally impacted? Great question important to recognize that that uh, these are very inclusive uh, processes that we as a public transit agency go through and and we have um, a variety of means by which we collect information um, we try to stay as connected as we can with the interests within the community including the developmental uh, disability community uh, we have a a large um, community advisory committee which i believe has an excess of of 20, maybe even more than that, uh, folks who sit on, on the CAC. And they are a, a great um, cross-section of, of interests uh, within the community. Uh, and so with their help, as well as our, our transit board, and then the other, um, the other means by which we have uh, connections with folks in, in the community, uh, we hope that, that the proposal is very well balanced and, and is, is accommodating uh, to those who might have mobility challenges. Uh, as a public transit agency, we take accessibility uh, extremely important. Um, it's, it's a priority for us, and, and certainly uh, we want our system to be accessible uh, for those who do have mobility challenges. If there's a particular um, element in the proposal that is of concern about accessibility, uh, we welcome those comments. Certainly we would like uh, to remedy, remedy that.
Okay. Here's a question that's come up a few times. How will state employees on, on the Route 68, so those who are um, using our existing Route 68, travel to the Capitol campus? Uh, certainly that trip under the proposal would still be available. Uh, we are, and we see this in our data as well, that there are a couple of trips at the Route 68 in the morning as well as in the evening uh, that are traveling to and from Capitol campus um, with respectable passenger loads. Our Route 68 under the proposal would have a time to transfer with our existing Route 13, which would uh, still provide service between those neighborhoods around Olympia High School uh, or anywhere else along Route 68 and the Capitol campus. We do recognize that that, that would require a transfer, but important to also understand that the transferring is a part of riding the bus and we try to, to design the service so that transfers are as seamless as possible. Our data also shows that, uh, that activity to and from the uh, South Puget Sound uh, Community College campus is slightly higher than the amount of activity coming to and from Capitol campus, which helps explain and understand the change to Route 68, uh, where we are seeing quite a bit of transfer activity right now between the Route 68 and our Route 43. That's a great question, and one we're getting, one we're getting quite a bit of, of um, inquiry about. Uh, and, and on that same topic, I should say too that for those who are concerned about the frequency of Route 13 in the early morning hours, we'd like to um, advise folks that it would be our intent to modify our existing service in order to be able to provide uh, a connection to Capitol Campus prior to 7 a.m. Okay. Okay, I see a question here about the schedules and when will schedules be available? That's a great question. Our schedules are one of the final pieces that we prepare under the proposal because um, they're the most detailed and we need to make sure that the, the decisions regarding where the routes are, are going are finalized before we can reasonably construct uh, the schedules. So we do have preliminary and draft schedules that have been put together. Um, at this point, we haven't released them to the public because we're still making decisions about uh, route alignments and, and transfers and connections. So they're, they're not quite ready for public consumption at this point. Uh, and and we, we do hope to release them uh, soon because we understand that in order to truly evaluate how the service is going to impact one's trip, the schedule is an essential piece of that. So uh, it's, it's my hope that we'll be able to get schedules out um, quickly. And so folks can have the opportunity uh, to provide more insightful um, analysis on, on their particular trip. Okay. Any other questions? Nope, no more questions. Well, we were shooting for an hour. We're just shy. That's okay. Oh, we have another question. So here's a question about outreach. Uh, have we contacted the Olympian? or other local news um, on the changes? Yes. Uh, we have had a very robust outreach effort with this particular service change. Um, with the help and the assistance of our marketing staff, thank you, by the way, to our marketing staff, they're outstanding. We've done a series of um, open houses. We have one more open house scheduled for next week at the uh, Tumwater Library, which is on Tuesday, June 4th. Monday, Monday, June 4th. Thank you, marketing staff. Monday, June 4th, uh, 4.30 in the afternoon is our final uh, public open house. We've also uh, done, in addition to this webinar, we've done um, eight uh, passenger intercepts with our, our teams of three. We've been out at four different uh, transfer locations, having face-to-face uh, -face conversations with bus passengers. Um, we have issued a media release and we've been active on social media as well. Uh, so a very robust effort to engage with the public. Uh, so, so yes, and, and good question there. I don't think we have any more questions that have come in so far. So again, we hope this has been uh, a valuable uh, 
way to, to learn more about our service change. Um, and we hope to provide more webinar opportunities in the future. And so again, if, if you've joined us live, thank you for the, the live version. Uh, but perhaps you're enjoying this as a as a recorded uh, version later on. And, and again, certainly we welcome your uh, comments and feedback as we'll continue to do so through uh, June 20th. I should say too that the final um, decision that we intend to present to the transit board will be considered on July 18th at the uh, regular meeting of the Inner City Transit Authority Board. And then if approved, the effective date of the changes would again be September 23rd of this year. All right, with that, uh, we will bring this particular bus ride to an end. Uh, so thanks again, and we hope everyone has a lovely day.